Why does metformin cause B12 deficiency? This is one of the most strange drug side effect mechanisms you need to know for the USMLE. So I'll ask you first, where is B12 absorbed in the GI tract and what does that absorption require? Because if you understand the physiology, the metformin connection makes perfect sense. All right, so let's start with B12 absorption. So it happens in the terminal ileum and it is not passive. It is a highly selective process. First intrinsic factor from your parietal cells binds to B12 and that B12 intrinsic factor complex has to attach to a receptor called cubulin on the ileal enterocytes to get absorbed. Now here's the key that USMLE really wants you to know. That cubulin receptor is calcium dependent, meaning you need calcium ions present for the receptor to grab onto the intrinsic factor B12 complex and internalize it. Well, here's where metformin causes the problem. Metformin alters calcium availability at the brush border membrane of the terminal ileum. And when calcium isn't available at that receptor, intrinsic factor can't deliver B12 into the enterocyte properly. So even though you are eating in a B12, even though your stomach is making intrinsic factor, the final step of the absorption is blocked because metformin is interfering with the calcium dependent uptake mechanism. Now, this doesn't happen overnight. It takes years of metformin use for the B12 stores to deplete, which is why USMD loves to give you a patient who's been on metformin for five to 10 years and now presents with macrocytic anemia or peripheral neuropathy. Some students see diabetic patients with neuropathy and immediately think, oh, that's diabetic neuropathy. But here's the trap. If the MCV is elevated or if the neuropathy pattern is atypical of diabetes, you need to check B12 because metformin induced deficiency is reversible with supplementation, whereas diabetic neuropathy is not.